Amen, 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 amen. We praise God for all that he has done. The songwriter says, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, amen. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, amen. I know a lot of you are tuning in right now and I'm going to ask you, as I did last week, that you, please ma'am, please sir, Go ahead and touch your screen and hit share so that the gospel can reach more people. Amen. I know that some of you are not going to do it, but that's all right. That's all right. I, it doesn't, doesn't hurt for me to ask. Amen. I know some of you are going to refuse to do it. Amen. But it doesn't hurt for me to ask. Go ahead down at the bottom of your screen and hit share. Amen. And share it to as many people as you possibly can. We will have other modes and means of communication coming to you soon from Holy Grove. God is on the move and we're doing some exciting things. All right, uh, before I jump in, uh, one public service announcement. We are, our intentions for Holy Grove is to open on the third Sunday, which is our church anniversary, on the third Sunday of this month, amen? We're going to ask that you get the word out. There will only be so many spaces available. Amen. We will open the doors at 10 a.m. And service will start promptly at 1030. Amen. Uh, I want to make a Sunday school announcement, but I want to talk to my superintendent, Sunday school superintendent first. Amen. I have to, I have to get some, some sound advice and, and some words of encouragement from her. Amen. Praise the Lord, Sister White. <laughs> amen, amen. So I want to make some announcements about Sunday school as well. It will not stop. Sunday school will continue. It will still continue virtually, but there are some, some movements that we have to make. Amen. Uh, we won't trouble you long. Thank you for all of you who are sharing. Uh, for those of you who are coming on still and coming on new, we thank you for joining us. This is Holy Grove Missionary Baptist Church and I. Yours truly, I'm the pastor, the proud pastor of this church, uh, Pastor Ian F. Cox. I want you to turn your Bibles. Turn your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. We're still in Colossians chapter 1. And I only have, I believe, enough time to deal with one verse. And then we'll, 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 we'll move around a little bit in the coming weeks, but verse number 10 is what stuck in my mind for us and our learning and our preached word today. It's Colossians chapter 1, verse number 10. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 10. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Lord, have mercy. Oh God, I need you more now than I've ever needed you before. I can't think without you. I can't speak without you. Lord, I can't even breathe. In the name of Jesus, that you would touch my mind and my heart, that I may recall everything that you have brought to me in my study. And I ask, oh God, that you sift through the things that may speak of me and only release the things that are pleasing to you. I thank you now, Master, for the musicians and the leadership of this church. I thank you for every pew member. I thank you for all of those who are members listening now and those visitors. We ask your choice blessings over them. Lord, I lift Deacon Brown up to you. Continue to touch his body. It's in Jesus' name. 
I pray that the church of God say, amen. Go ahead and start sharing now, saints, amen. I have one verse, I have one verse. Colossians chapter one, verse number 10. And the word of God reads in this manner. It says, it says, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I want to read that again. I want to read that again. It says that ye, that you and I might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. For a short time, saints, I won't be before you long. I want to talk about the spiritual goal of a believer. The spiritual goal of a believer. When we look at this letter to Colossians from the writer who is uh, from the author who is Paul, we understand now that there were some pressures that the church at Colossae was facing. There were some, there were some, some who believed in Christ and believed in the law. They believed in Christ and they believed in their own stinking thinking. They believed in Christ, but they had to have an addition to what the fullness of Christ is. And, and, and the Bible teaches us opposite because Christ is all in all. When we have Jesus Christ, I, I challenge us to, to know that this is all that we're going to need. He is all that we're going to need. Because the Bible teaches us that Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And when Christ came, he not only, he not only lived righteous, but he gave us his Holy Ghost power so that we could live righteous. The spiritual goal of the believer is right here in the text because it says to us that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and, and increasing in the knowledge of God. I, was, I, I believe that, that, that Paul is, in, is, is, is inspiring and trying to motivate the people at Colossae to stick to what the preached word had already delivered unto them. They have heard the word of truth. They are practicing now the, 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 what we talked about last week, his, his joy and his praying for them because of the love that they have for the saints. Now he is, he is telling them that the goal is to live a life that is pleasing to God being fruitful, and that they grow every day. It's motivational. I was, I was listening to some motivational quotes and speeches uh, on, on the other night, and the familiar ones were too common to dwell on, but there were some that stuck with me, and I want to just take a couple of minutes to share them with you. Uh, one of the old adages tells us that there are four kinds of people. Four. There are, there are four kinds of people. The first person is, uh, is, is he who knows and does not want to know. This person is a fool. You need to shun him. Then the second person is he who knows and realizes it and wants to know, or he who does not know and realizes it and wants to know, he is simple. We need to teach him. Amen, somebody? This, this third person, there's four kinds, this third person is he who knows 
and is not aware that he knows is asleep, we need to wake him. Amen, somebody? And then there's this Paul kind of person. It's he who knows and knows that he knows. This person is wise and we need to follow him. The last person is a great description for Paul who is praying that the church at Colossae will act out God's will in their lives. If we are going to be effective in this ministry, in this life, we must get in God's word and find out his will for our individual lives because when we are working with his will, it will collectively work with the will of the church and the will of the body of Christ so that we all can be a mighty army marching in this dying world. Now, the second adage I would like to share is one I heard when I was listening to uh, Denzel Washington give a word of encouragement to some students on a stage. Some of you may have seen it, but it describes, sort of describes our lesson text, our, our title of our lesson text today uh, about spiritual goals. Uh, Denzel contends that dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. Uh, uh, Mr. Washington says, goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency. He says, he says, he says to these young, young people on the stage, he says, I pray that, that when you, when you lay down, before you lay down at night, that you put your shoes real far under your bed so that when you rise in the morning, you have to get down on your knees to get them. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have shoes way underneath the bed. I, I put a pillow under mine because I want to pray in comfort and not in pain. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> the text tells us that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Paul is giving us a profound hope from his heart to the church at Colossae. But he does not just grab this verse out of the air without instructions. Uh, the start of this train of thought actually comes out of verse number nine. Uh, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So before we get to verse number 10, Paul has a few, just a couple, just three things uh, uh, on two levels, three things on two levels that he wants us to understand that we might be filled first with the knowledge of his will in verse number nine and uh, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So before we delve into our lesson text of verse number 10, Paul gives us some detailed instructions on how to achieve our goal. Uh, he says, first, to be filled with the knowledge of his will. Knowledge, this, this knowledge uh, in the text, it means that we should know things ethical and divine. That's the first level of these three things. That we, we should know things that are ethical and divine. The first level of reaching our goal is we have got to know what the will of God is in our lives. Uh, 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 listen, listen. There are all kinds of knowledge. You know, you, you, you got people uh, walking around with self-help books. You got, you got, uh, 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 you got people who are who are your, your, your encouragers, you got motivational speakers, you got life coaches that give you things like the knowledge of self. You got coaches on fields and in courts that give you the knowledge of athletics. You got people in church who are set up to give you uh, the knowledge about church and church etiquette. But the most important knowledge to have is the knowledge of God's will for our lives. 
See, you, you, we, cannot, we cannot move forward unless we know what God wants for us. First level is telling us that in order for us to walk worthy, we must have the Lord in verse number 10. Uh, in order for us to have, have the Lord in verse number 10, we must have the knowledge of his will listed in verse number 9. Uh, uh, how, do we, how do we know God's will for our life? Oh man, I, I, I love great questions. Uh, I can't hear your voices, but I know that's coming up in my spirit. How, how can we, Pastor Cox, how can we know what God's will is for our lives? How can we obtain this, this uh, uh, unattainable earthly, earthly knowledge? We know that God is all knowing. We know that God is almighty. We know that God is all powerful. We know that God is everywhere at the same time and he knows but how do we get to know what he wants for us oh I like that question it started at 9 45 this morning it's called Sunday church school amen somebody <laughs> it starts at 7 50 on Wednesdays it's called Bible study uh, 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 it's called praying and asking God because James chapter 1 tells us that if we lack wisdom, if we lack what we need to know, we can ask God and he'll pour it out. The Bible says, upbraideth not, which literally means that God will never give you more than you can bear, but he'll pour out everything you need. Amen? <laughs> How do we get this knowledge? You can't just get it in Sunday school. You can't just get it in Bible study. You can't just get it on Sunday morning because those are only three days out of a seven-day week. There are times where you have to go to God by yourself, for yourself, so that God can pour into you. And it starts with asking God, what is it that you want me to know about my life? What is it that you would have me to do, O oh Lord, that I may have the knowledge of your will for my life? And I tell you, once you find out what God wants for you, nobody can take it from you. Once you know what God has for you and you realize where God wants you to go, how he wants you to move, who he wants you to talk to, who he wants you to witness to, there is nobody, there is nothing that can ever be able to stop the motion of God's will. Because when God is before you, who can be against you? Proverbs 1 and 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Amen, church. Now, that's, that's that first level. That's the first level. Uh, I spent enough time there. Now, now this, this second level has both wisdom and spiritual understanding. To, to have the knowledge of God's will is the first level, but in order for us to go higher, in order for us to, to move higher, we we got to have wisdom. Huh? Wisdom, wisdom is knowing what to do with the knowledge of God's will. See, because there are a lot of people who have knowledge. Mm -hmm. There are people who have degrees with a whole lot of knowledge. There are people who have not just only been to the bachelor's degree, but they have gotten master's degrees and doctorate degrees. There are some that have had double majors and have two degrees in one area and three degrees in another. But you can have all the knowledge, but without wisdom, you can be an educated fool. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, knowing God's will and knowing what to do with God's will, it literally talks to us about having a practice of what is necessary for upright living. That, that's wisdom. Spiritual understanding, uh, understanding really is kind of a word that means bringing everything together. Hallelujah. <laughs> In relation to the human spirit, it's a rational soul. It's as, as part, it's part, uh, it's a man, it's a part of the man that's akin to God and serves as God's instrument. That's spiritual understanding. It's when you have given up what you want for God's will for what he wants in our lives so that we can be used by him. Amen, somebody. Uh, these two levels together 
will help us all reach verse number 10 with vigor that will not be denied in this world. Proverbs 4 and 7 tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, the Bible says, get an understanding. Y'all, 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 I hear some of y'all quoted. I, some of y'all been to Sunday school, praise the Lord. Paul gives us and this church at Colossae clear instructions on what to do in verse 9 before we can achieve our goal in verse number 10. Here we are in our lesson text which starts out by telling us to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm moving along, saints. Come with me. Walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. I like the way the NIV puts it. The NIV says, so that we may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way. The keys to successful living is pleasing God first. Oh, in this text, it's designed to show us the two commandments that Jesus gave us. Love God with everything you have. Heart, mind, body, soul, spirit, uh, 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 being, skin, everything you got, love God with it. Amen. <laughs> And then Jesus says, love thy neighbor as thyself. I'm telling you, it's encapsulated in these, this one verse. He says first that we might live a life that is always pleasing to God. Honoring God first is the beginning of wisdom. A walking worthy means that we let go of those foolish things, that we that we, that we grow up in Christ. Walk worthy means that every day we keep in the back of our minds what is it that God wants for our lives and how can we please him with what he gave us. Hallelujah, somebody. It's not what you have because it's a whole lot of people that got a lot of stuff and still don't have good sense. But it's how you use what you have. Hallelujah, somebody. It's not, it's not what you can obtain materially because it's a whole lot of people with a whole lot of material that can't walk across the street without stumbling. But it's about letting God use you and use your materials so that you can please him first. I'm in the text. Love God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. Then it says, being fruitful in every good work. Did y'all see that in the text? Being fruitful in every good work. Uh, the, the NIV says, bearing fruit in every good work. The Bible teaches us that a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. Uh, uh, a tree is, is known, is recognizable, can be easily spotted by the fruit that it bears. Now, everybody does not bear good fruit. Praise the Lord, somebody. There are, there are some that bear rotten fruit. Uh, and, and there are some that are leading people bearing rotten fruit and they are offsprings of rotten fruit because the old adage tells us, you remember mama and them used to say, uh, the, 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 the fruit don't fall too far from the tree. So there are those that are not pleasing God, don't know the will of God for our lives, don't know what it is that God wants us to do, and we cannot please him because we lack faith. Oh, Hebrews tells us that without faith it's impossible to please the Lord. Here it is. It says that, that we ought to bear fruit in every good work. Then there are those of us who seek to please the Lord, who press our way, though being persecuted on the outside, bearing fruit that come from the outside or inside to the outside. There are those that are fruitful. 
those that are at peace with God, those, those that, that don't mind a little church. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Here we go, here we go. It says bearing fruit in every good work. When we look at this bearing fruit, it's one who produces others who are just like the fruit bearers. Uh, Jesus kind of, kind of gives it to us. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Huh? And he says, those that are abiding in the vine, that are connected to the vine, they produce fruit. Uh, they produce much fruit. They will produce more fruit. They will, be, they will be connected to the vine so that they can produce fruit. And when we are connected to Jesus, we will bear fruit in every good work. Now, notice I didn't say that everything you do will be good. <laughs> but there will be good work that comes from a person who's connected to the vine. Now, it says... That we ought to live a life that please God. We ought to bear good fruit. And then it says we ought to be growing in the knowledge of God. Now, I'm rushing to a close, saints. But in order to grow up, in order to live a life that please God, to walk worthy, to bear fruit, it says we got to be growing. Now, before you grow, you got to be born. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm getting excited now. I'm getting excited now. So, so, so all of us have been born out of the womb, because if you wouldn't, then you wouldn't hear me now. But there are some of us that need to be born again so that we can grow, huh? Uh, uh, and in order to be connected to the vine, in order to live a life that pleases God, to walk worthy, in order to bear good fruit, you gotta be born again. Before you can grow, you gotta be born again. Well, I know there's a tough situation here because so many of us live our lives and we have not been born again, born again. Jesus told Nicodemus, uh, I want you to know verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. In order to be born again, you got to receive the vine. Receive what about the vine? Receive that he lived in this earth for 33 and a half years, the Bible says, without sin. Receive the fact that he paid the penalty so that we can bear fruit, so that we can walk worthy. We, he paid the penalty for our sins on Calvary's cross. We have to receive it by faith and believe it by faith and know that Jesus died so that we could walk worthy and bear fruit and be born again. He died so that we don't have to walk on this earth alone. He died so that we might be able to march as a mighty army. He died so that we can know the will of God in our lives, so that we might have all knowledge and wisdom and spiritual understanding. He died so that you and I could be born again. Oh, but it would be a sad Jesus, an unfinished Jesus, an unworthy Jesus if he didn't rise from the dead. <laughs> Paul says, if Jesus didn't get up, we are all men most miserable. I want you to know that Jesus did not stay dead. Because Friday he died, but Sunday he rose. And when he rose, it gave us power <laughs> so that we might be able to walk like him power so that we might be able to talk like in power so that we might be conformed into the image of, his, of God's son power so that we might be able to say that we can please God in the flesh power because the Holy Spirit that's working on the inside starts moving on the outside bearing fruit for the people around us power 
so that we can start desiring the sincere milk of the word and growing thereby. But we won't stay on milk. There will be one day where you will come in the time of your life where you will say, for God I live and for God I die. Power, I'm talking about power. Holy Ghost power. Worshiping power. Praising power. Power, live like power. God gives us the tools that we need so that we may live a life that's worthy and pleases Him in every way. Bearing good fruit, bearing fruit in every work. Watch this, and growing in the knowledge of God. There comes a time in our lives where we have to put away those childish things and grow up in the Lord. It's the it's the the, the, the spiritual goal of a believer is that we grow up in him. Huh? That we know what he wants for us and that we are able to please him not love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, soul and strength and then be fruitful Love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus says, in all of this hangs the whole law. You can keep the law, not by rituals and the slaying of blood of bulls and goats, and not by dietary laws, not, not, not by being a Gnostic, but by, by following what Jesus said. Love God with everything you got and love your neighbor as yourself. And then God will let you grow up in the knowledge of him. We pray that this word has blessed you. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, our Father and our God, I thank you, Lord, for pouring your word into me. I thank you, Lord, for letting me rise up and see another day. Now, oh God, there's somebody who's listening to me. Somebody who hears my voice. And they don't know you in the free pardon of their sins. They have not accepted your death, burial, and resurrection by faith. They have not believed and they are not born again. I pray right now, Father, that you would prick the hearts, touch those who are outside of the ark of safety. God, I pray that whatever it is in your word that would draw them in, pray that you allow your Holy Spirit to have his way in the life of the unbeliever. That they may raise up their hands and cry out, I yield, I yield, I yield. What is it that I might do to be saved? Then there are those who are in a backslidden condition, Lord. Those who are believers but don't act like I pray, oh God, that you grow them up in your knowledge. I pray that you turn them around. I pray, oh God, that you help them to desire the sincere milk of the word. I thank you now, Father. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Is there one today? Won't you come to Jesus today? The Bible is clear. When you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, it's impossible for you to keep walking in sin. God will immediately save you because what's in the heart will come out of the mouth. <laughs> what's in the heart will eventually become how you behave. What you believe will be how you behave. Is there somebody that wants to know God's will for their life? Somebody who wants to turn around from what they're doing and give their life over to Christ. You can come down. 
The songwriter says, while you have time, God bless you. God bless you and God keep you. It will always be my earnest prayer. Uh, we thank God for his word. Now it is giving time. Uh, keep keep worshiping and praising now. Amen. Don't, 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 don't just stay happy on the word. Amen. <laughs> it's giving time. I know, I know. It's uh it's tough sometimes. But if you trust God with a little, he will bless you with a lot. <laughs> that you will not have room enough to receive. Huh? He'll not only pour you out a blessing, the Bible says he will rebuke the devourer for your name, for his name's sake. He says that those bill collectors, if we can put it in 2021, those bill collectors will be held back so that you have time to take care of business. <laughs> delightsome land and that those that live around you, Malachi chapter 3, they will call you blessed because you can. Huh? Paul says, press down, <laughs> shake it together, <laughs> and running over. Will men give up to your book? You'll give to God today and unknowingly get a raise on your job tomorrow. gospel. Those of you who came on, share this gospel. Amen. Um, because what we must all understand <clears throat> is that the church is open because Jesus wants to win more souls and make more disciples. Amen. Somebody. That, that's the primary goal of the church. Amen. You, you, we cannot put anything in front of that. Uh, because everything derives from that. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. We want you to help us help somebody. Amen. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your consistent support. Holy Grove, um, it almost brings me to tears how awesome you have been for an entire year. I believe God uh, uh, started moving on your heart because you couldn't get in his house. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. So I ask that you continue to support those visitors. Uh, we thank God that you joined Holy Grove. You could have listened to a whole bunch of different broadcasts, but you joined us today. Uh, God bless you. We love you so much. Uh, let the church say amen. Yes, yes. My favorite part is when you say God has spoken. <laughs>
around your family now. Gather them around. Uh, let's sing it together. Love to the church. <laughs> Y'all have a great afternoon.